Okay, uh, so tell us, uh, Dave, uh, how did this uh, continue to escalate then? Well, each time I would go to court, of course, I wouldn't win. It was, uh, once again, without representation or without being able to, you know, do know the justice system. Uh, uh, a citizen can't defend himself because of the, the court system. It's, uh, it's set up where you might not be able to prevent your evidence because of a... You don't know how to prevent it. Or right. You don't know the procedure. So you really, you're, you're a fool if you try to represent yourself, and more than likely you will lose. And so affording an attorney is almost out of the question on these cases. So uh, you just take your lumps. And you, you, but each time these, this would happen, I would comply and tone back the things that were bothersome at the time, but it didn't seem to appease them, so they used the same method, the same charges yeah. to continue to come back. So so let's get to uh let's get to the head of it. Let's get to the big you know, the big thing. I mean Walt Sorrell came by Walt right? Sorrell was the uh, uh, he's he the was, code he enforcement was, officer. He's the code enforcement officer now. Uh, three months after he was hired I received my first which would have been my third summons from him. Yes, and right. it's kind of ironic that after just three months on the job in the city of Whitehall that I get coded for the same things I've been coded for in the past. Mm -hmm. And it started out real insignificant. And so what what did Mr. Sorrell do? Uh, what, what, what happened at that particular time, I had placed a couple of items out on the curb uh, before the uh, a designated trash day pickup, and uh, he noticed them and came up onto my porch to put uh, a sticker when usually they put the sticker on the merchandise that's out on the curb, notice letting the uh, homeowner know that it should be taken back till trash mm -hmm. day. Regardless, he came on my porch, then he saw the furniture that I had. Once again, it's, it's not visible. You cannot tell anything as you drive by. However, then he went to my backyard and took photographs of my How did he do that? With a camera. But what did he do? Did he, uh, he just, he just op open the uh, back door? Yeah, and, and started photographing all the things I had in my backyard, which is is a Fourth Amendment violation. It's curtilage. Right. Which so, so, so tell me all these things. So he opened the the picket uh, the right. gate to your uh, your backyard, right. and he took photographs of the backyard photographs after photographs of the backyard. Okay, he was. Uh, didn't he get up on a roof? He got on my neighbor's roof to photograph down into my backyard to look at the structures I had constructed uh -huh. to protect my property from getting wet. And he went on uh, he went on my neighbor's property without permission mm. to shoot through my trellis, which at that time in March had no foliage on it, so he could see through the trellis my backyard mm -hmm. and the things I had in it. And uh, from that, he used those photographs to charge me with uh, another violation of yeah. And he uh, he also uh, took photos of your uh, front porch, which is completely right. enclosed uh, from the uh, the uh, threshold. Right. Of the porch. Oh, sure. You cannot see my porch in any direction unless you come parallel to my porch. Come up on the uh, exactly. property, yeah. And getting back to, um, he came on my neighbor's property, who was, who was an elderly woman who was a friend of mine, and when I confronted him over the phone, where who gave you permission to go on Wanda's property, he told me Mrs. Policimo did. And I thought it rather odd that she would give him permission, and I did ask her later on that evening, and she said she did not give him permission to go on her property. I called, uh, and she ended up calling him and, and quite upset that he would say that. He was led over to her property by my neighbor that we share a driveway with, who's also a collaborator in collusion with the old man, John Artis, who initiated mm. it. And so things started escalating. You know, it was it was being um, well. Let me show you what else he has, kind of thing. And it ended up Walt had come completely around my property, taking photographs. When the whole issue began, when I had two Nordic track working pieces that I put out Monday for the trash. Yeah. 
in the sense that I had no space for them and, and couldn't find a buyer for them. However, that was a, as far as I'm concerned. And then, he, and then he goes back and finds out that I've been gigged before for the same violations. And with that knowledge, he wrote me another summons. So, uh, so this was summons number three. Three, okay. And um, if you could move on and uh, tell us about number four, and then the uh, end of yeah, uh, number all four. That. <sighs> Let's see. Number four was basically pretty much the same thing. Uh, it, it, it is all. It's, it's all a visible, a visible. Um, how should I say this? It, it, in my driveway, I would have things I'm repairing. This is where I work. Right. I would have stuff out. And anytime I had stuff out, Walt's Raw would make it a point and always come by when I'm not here. I mean, I've never been here. He's never had permission. I have never given him anything. He's never had court documents. He's never had anything that would permit him to be on my property. But yet, this seems to be the, uh, the, the you know, modus. This would be the standard operating procedure, I guess, in the city. You don't need to respect anybody's property or their rights. Mm -hmm. You can just come on, and he makes sure I'm not home. Huh. And uh, and also, he's also being advised by my neighbor as to what I'm doing, uh -huh. because those are the only two people that have been as mm. complaintiffs, so to speak, and not even mentioned in any of the complaints. Yeah, it's it's. So what was the uh, end result of all this at this at, point? At that point, uh, the fourth one, I ended up uh, uh, talking to Walt about it, and uh, because of I had cleaned up some of the things he was concerned with, mm -hmm. trying to comply but not right. all the way, he said, plead guilty, because I had to go to court again in Franklin County, and I'll call down and only get you a $50 fine, uh -huh. and, you know, and make it easy on you. So that's what I did. Yeah. They're so giving. So what I did is I pled guilty <laughs> was, was uh, find, uh, oh, God, stop. Oh, that was number four. Are we on four? Yeah, this is the fourth one. This is the end of the four. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the $50 fine was on number three. I'm sorry. There's so many of them that are confusing. Okay. Fifty dollars fine after it was all said and done. When he came over and got on, put it in my backyard. We got, I got a fifty dollars fine. I pled guilty. Number four, same thing. However, I talked to the uh, public, uh, the prosecutor for the city in Columbus. Had a discussion with him, and he de he decided to dismiss the case if I would clean up some area in between my garage, which I shared with my neighbor, who also had stuff in there also. It was dismissed. The last one, number five, was the same thing. I had an on-site hearing by the judge, finally, and short story long, hey. I still had to comply with something. The only, the only thing that it was a problem, I had indoor furniture on my enclosed porch, and nothing that says I can't have it on there, and everything else the judge would let go. So in other words, it there was a, other a, 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 a quid pro quo. Quid pro quo, but the, uh, interesting, the interesting about this, Jerry, is that there were, this time there were three summonses. Mm -hmm. Two of them were for, uh, one for artificial flowers in my landscape, right. and one for chipping paint. The irony is I'm the second person in 15 years ever to be charged with artificial flowers, which is kind of, kind of, yeah, kind of pulled this thing in, in together. Mm -hmm. And not only that, there was never any remedy, it was just a summons for both of them, right. which is improper procedure. I went to court, I had a public defender because the chipping paint, believe it or not, can get you 30 days in jail. I got a public defender, we did a quid pro quo, things were dismissed on one of the charges if I would agree to clean them up, which they were, and that's the status now, five years, five right. court appearances, and it is nothing but harassment due to a personal agenda by the public service officer, Ray, yeah. Direct, Ray Ogden, who is a grinding his axe, statements have been made, I'd be better off being out of Whitehall.